Welcome to Ingrid's World. My name is Ingrid Paris Hicklin. I am the host and executive producer of the television show. I'm thrilled because you're watching this episode. You will meet amazing managers from the Clubhouse Network. The Clubhouse Network was founded over 30 years ago and is comprised of more than 100 clubhouses in 21 countries, providing 25,000 youth per year with all the programs and services that one would normally find hmm, on a college campus. On this show, you will meet Aaron McKinnon at the Best Buy Teen Tech Center at Phase 4 Learning Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Then meet Xavier Benoit at the Clubhouse located at the Grand Street Settlement in Manhattan, New York. And then we will meet Robert O'Quinn from the six clubhouses located in Fairfax County, Virginia. Well, welcome to the show, Aaron and Robert and Xavier. Well, let's start with you, Xavier. You know, um, introduce yourself. What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Xavier Bedward. Uh, I work here at the Teen Tech Center in uh, Grand Street Settlement, Lower East Side of Manhattan. I am a teen tech coordinator, and you know, I'm excited to be on Ingrid's World, you know, <laughs> repping for New York City, NYC. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And Aaron, introduce yourself. Uh, how you doing? My name is Aaron McKinnon. I'm the coordinator at the Best Buy Teen Tech Center at Phase 4 Learning Center here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, it is an honor and a privilege to be here uh, to speak with you today. Wonderful. Honor to have you here. And Robert O'Quinn, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, uh, thank you, Ingrid. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Robert O'Quinn. I am the Community Technology Manager with Fairfax County Department of Neighborhood and Community Services in Northern Virginia, wow. right across the river from Washington, D.C. Ah, wonderful, wonderful. So let's just go ahead on and talk about your careers. Where did you, you know, start off at? Um, and we're going to first start with... Let's first start with Robert. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started? Well, I, uh, I moved to the Washington, D.C. area when I completed my service as a Peace Corps volunteer in Central Asia uh, to pursue a Ph.D. at American University. My second year here, I got a job, a part-time job, as an after-school technology center coordinator and I've actually been doing that since 2003. Wow. I remember very well, Robert. <laughs> very well. Wonderful, wonderful. And I must say, Dr. O'Quinn, because you did get your PhD. <laughs> so Thank you. wonderful. All right, let's now move to Aaron. So glad to have you. You are amazing. I watched your videos. What a privilege it is to have you on the show, Aaron. Oh, see it. Um, well, uh, I first got started with the Clubhouse Network in um, 2005, right? Um, before we were called the Three Rivers Computer Clubhouse, and uh, in 2018, we became the Best Buy Team Tech Center. Prior to that, uh, my, my background is in industrial engineering. Um, but after working, you know, jobs uh, in manufacturing with like a company like General Motors and Xerox, you feel like, uh, you know, it's great pay, but it wasn't a lot of qualitative, you know, effects coming from that as far as making a difference for real, for real. Um, and I got put in a position where I had an opportunity to interview for this role. Um, and I couldn't believe that they were going to pay me all this money to have amazing fun with youth and do these great things. So I said, you know, why not? Let's take it. And uh, here I am, some almost 17 years later. 17 years later, oh my goodness. Yeah. And Xavier, what about you? How did you come to the Clubhouse Network? Uh, mine's a little different. Like, I totally wasn't trying to do technology as like a thing. I, I kind of just wanted to, like, I went to school for my master's in social work. So I'm totally like therapeutic and all about strengths and highlighting things. So I ended up like, being able to link that into actually being able to be a, a tech coordinator where like, just like Aaron said, like getting paid to have fun, bro. Like high key, low key, get to be like a kid at the same time, even though you gotta be supervising and making sure the, the young people are good, but just an overall opportunity just to have fun, to challenge myself and to grow and to learn. So like being able to take my social work degree and apply it to young people in a creative aspect has been a blessing and it's been really fun. So 
Yeah, that's how I kind of stumbled into this beautiful world. Oh, and it really is because, you know, what you're doing with the young people there is like amazing. It really is. So let's talk about the type of technology that's available there at the clubhouse. And um, Aaron, you talk about the video that you're going to show us. Oh, so, uh, well, some of the technology that we have here, um, you know, we do multimedia technology, everything from music production, video production, web design, graphics, full music studio, full green screen room, full maker space, podcasting stations. Um, what you're going to see on the video is a brief 30 second roll call of uh, who we are in Pittsburgh. Something came out and we wanted to let everybody know, you know, post pandemic that we are active. So that's what you're going to check out. That was a wonderful video and I you know it really just captures what you're doing there and so important. But let's move now to um, Xavier. You have a video too? Yeah we do actually have a video. So our video <laughs> is not as cool as Aaron because you know he's an OG vet in the game, big bro status, but like we're new we have a, uh, a video just to kind of showcase a little tour of like our space. So we're super new. We've only been open since October 4th of 2021. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. You know me? <laughs> so it's been super new. So right now this video is just to kind of like, hey, we're here. COVID is kind of over for the most part. We still lingering, but you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's create. We have 3D model printers. We have Adobe Creative on our computer so we can do like some Photoshop stuff. We have Premiere Pro so we can do some videos. I'm in the studio right now. So we have Appleton Beats and then we have like a drum pad. We have speakers, like a whole really cool setup. So even do some photography stuff. We have Wacom tablets. So in this video, you're going to see a little tease of just what it's like to be a, a young person or a mentor or a volunteer in the space. Wow. Okay, you make me want to come there. <laughs> Welcome to the Best Buy Teen Tech Center. We're in the business of making. We're an exploratory learning space for youth 13 to 18 who are interested in pursuing their passion projects. We provide a space, the tech, and the resources to turn those passion projects into tangible future careers. The Best Buy Teen Tech Center at Grand Street Settlement is a maker space that just gives young people the space to create, whether it's graphic design, or we have filmmaking, we have coding, we have some young photographers, and we even have 3D modeling. We just give our young people a space to be like, I am doing this. We don't need to be perfect. You just need to be eager to learn and hungry to just try. Now, I hope you really enjoy this video because it great job you did in putting that together because it really captures the imagination and what you can actually do there at the clubhouse. And it's also inspiring, you know? My, my goodness. And now, Robert, did you bring a video? Uh, yes, I did, Ingrid. Uh, our video is also somewhat of a welcome video when we reopened. Uh, we had some new partnerships within uh, Fairfax County government because we were the at the forefront in virtual programming. So we were the ones showing everybody how to use Zoom and how to use Team. But of course, uh, we also show off our 3D printers and sound studios and cricket machines and, and what our kids do. But our, our centers are a little bit different because uh, we are 20 hours a week for teens, clubhouse all the way. But because we're in communities, uh, we serve everybody every age uh, from six to 106. So uh, we show off what we're doing for all the different age groups in the community and what we can do if you're in another Fairfax County government agency and you want to learn about technology, here's what our staff can do, our fantastic clubhouse coordinators.
Neighborhood and Community Services supports the continued science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics education in current and emerging technologies for participants of all ages. Our technology programs offer everything from simple computer usage and internet access to training opportunities on a variety of topics, including social media, coding, graphic design, 3D printing, and more. NCS houses six centers that are a part of a global initiative known as the Clubhouse Network. Welcome to NCS Tech Centers. My name is Alvaro Luna and I'm in charge of one of the multiple sites that we have in Fairfax County. I am in charge of the Reston Teen Center where we provide advanced technology for our participants from robotics to engineering, coding, Arduino boards, Raspberry Pis, you name it. We have 3D printer capabilities and many technologies that even are not available at colleges and universities. Hi, I'm Maria Rodriguez and I'm the Tech Educator at Wilson Community Center. Here, we collaborate with local organizations and partners to provide more resources to the community. Participants here are given the tools and skills to explore their own creative ideas, design, develop problem-solving skills, and enhance their confidence in using a variety of technologies. We also provide academic support and enrichment opportunities. Participants explore different aspects of technology by using 3D printers, cricket machines, computers, robotics, coatings, and so much more. Greetings, I'm George Kadima, the Information Technology Educator based at the Yorkville Computer Lab. The Community Technology Program is designed to enhance the digital literacy amongst children and adults in underserved communities throughout Fairfax County. The After School Program offers a structural environment for technology education and academic support for children and teens. Staff also hosts workshops and provides specialized instructions for adults during the day. There's no cost to participants. For specific questions about programming and classes, please contact each location directly. In addition to our community-based programming, we can be a resource for you, our fellow HHS staff, when it comes to things like learning how to use Zoom or helping your clients learn computer basics like creating an email account. And we have the capability to provide support via virtual lunch and learns or on-demand videos. Let us know how we can help you use technology to be successful. about what you can do and I love the fact that I, when I was watching the video you inc you're so inclusive so it's not just teens but it's members of the community as you said from six to a hundred and six and that's you know so important so now let's talk about members activities and what they actually can do a member can do now Aaron you brought a couple of pictures there that were showing to our audience there. You have a, uh, a sound studio, is that it? Yes, yes, yes. So uh, what you're looking at is, is our music studio. Um, it's kind of revamped a little bit now. You know, I got pictures of Biggie up. But uh, you can always find members in the studio either creating music, um, playing the keyboard, learning how to DJ. That's a real hot topic for our space, um, as well as podcasting. So that's what you're taking a look at. Oh my goodness. And podcasting too? Oh, podcasting. Yeah, we all about amplifying the youth voice. Um, kids have amazing things that they want to talk about. And always make them do the research first so you are not blind, blindly out there speaking. But um, yeah, podcasting. Wonderful, wonderful. Aaron, that's beautiful. Xavier, you have quite a bit of photographs here that you want to show. It starts off with the butterfly. What's that about? Hey, because life is a process, man. So first you start with <laughs> larvae, then you cocoon, then you start flying around. So it's a whole process. But overall, that that first butterfly highlights what it's like being a member in the space. You come in, you're like, what am I doing? I'm trying to figure stuff out. And as you come more often and you start to build with the community, it's like, okay, I think I'm understanding myself. And then eventually you start to express yourself and start to really become who you are. So 
that first photo is literally a process of what it's like to be in the tech center. And the other photos are post-production. We have a lot of beautiful souls that love to like do actual graphic design from fashion. So like they just love to be creative and we've done color photography. So we've had our young people try to portraits and create animation. So it's definitely a plethora of things that you could do in the space. Even like I said, hop in the studio, do some drawing, we got 3D modeling. So there's a bunch of different things for them to connect with. I always say it's to build a to build their brand because you know they got any phones with TikTok and all this other stuff. So yes. able to help them in any kind of beautiful way to kind of give themselves some autonomy in this world that's kind of telling them what to do. Like that's what <laughs> that's what we're trying to work on. Beautiful, beautiful. So how do you keep people motivated, Robert? How how do members and how those who are working with members how do they keep them motivated? Well, first and foremost, I think the clubhouse model, the tried and true, is to let the kids take the lead. Find what interests them and, and you know, give them a little piece of it and then let them run with it. Uh, from our side, we try our best to get the funding and do the research to monitor trends to expose the kids to the latest and greatest technology also. Uh, here in Fairfax County, it's all about equitable access to technology. Um, so, you know, as long as the kids are able to see and exposed to new technologies and do what they want with it, go down their own path. Uh, that, that's our tried and true uh, foundation of our programming here to keep kids motivated. And I, I think that that's really so important, you know, so you're giving them the opportunity. And you, I love what you're saying, you're letting them you know, lead the way. Uh, Aaron, what, what's your take on that question? How do you keep team members motivated? Well, um, for us here, it's all about the partnerships and relationships that we have um, with different organizations, right? So uh, whether it's, you know, partnerships with iRobot, um, our C2C Pathways, Geek Squad Academy, we always have mentors that's coming in. Um, a, a lot of times the youth may come in and not know what to do. They may get overwhelmed by seeing all of this great stuff. And I'm like, play, here's a $3,500 camera, go take some pictures, and they may not know what to do with it, right? But I'm telling them, um, you know, it's all about access and opportunity, right? And so having that space, kind of like Robert was saying, where we can create that tech equity, right, and level that playing field and give these youth a, a shot does kind of get them motivated because if it wasn't for our space, in a lot of instances, they wouldn't have access to this stuff. I was, um, I had the opportunity to, um, re, um, to watch the video that you sent um, regarding alumni you know, talking, and that just touched my heart because here they're talking about they were exposed to one person had never been on an airplane until they went to a teen conference. And mm -hmm. I, I'm like, wow, that, that was pretty meaningful. Xavier, you're the new, you know, man on the block. Talk about that. How are you keeping, you know, people motivated? Um. Being the fresh kid off the block, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, keeping them motivated, definitely, like how Aaron and uh, Dr. Quinn said, it's definitely like making sure that you listen to them. You get feedback from the young people. Like our space is a maker space, and from nine to five or eight to three or seven to two, they're forced to do stuff and to kind of be on and to kind of do all these other stuff. So giving them an opportunity to just kind of not let's say let their hair down but metaphorically let their hair down and breathe and have a conversation and just essentially tech play and just like yo like can i go in the studio can i do this like it becomes an incentive like all right if i get this stuff done i can do this so honestly having them refer a friend i let my members do the tour with me i'm like oh you want to tour me oh, let's do this tour like whatever that might be having them be a part of like the overall process of like, all right, what are we going to do this month? What are we going to do this day for programming? Like, how is that going to look? How are we going to shape this culture? And letting them be a part of it, having those conversations, like talking to them like they are people and not just that they are young people. Eventually, mm. yes, they are young, but just engaging them in ways that I would have wanted to be engaged at that age and understanding like, yo, they're advanced in us and look at all the resources we have. Like, I never had this opportunity. So like, I can only imagine how much fun they're going to have. So before I try to control them, I was like, all right, let me learn as much as I can from them so they can learn from me so we can make this thing a community. And so definitely letting them be a part of that process has made it easier to kind of flow in the tech center. 
I love what you're saying because you're allowing, you're giving them a space where they can express themselves and, and share what they're interested in doing, which a lot of times, you know, might be a little bit different. <laughs> so, yeah, and I love that, you know, you don't say this is how it has to be, you know. Wow, what a wonderful work you're doing there. Um, Robert, how would you ex say that? Um, one of the things I want to kind of let's say, talk about the biggest surprise about since managing the clubhouses. What has been your biggest surprise, Robert? Well, if you don't uh, know the clubhouse network, uh, if you're an outsider, you're going to be very surprised when you go to your first annual conference. Uh, that's something, uh, unfortunately, with COVID, it's been put on hold a little bit, but the level of professional development that the Clubhouse Network staff puts together for the Clubhouse coordinators from around the world uh, is, is truly a privilege to be a part of. Uh, you have people, you meet people from Google, you, you get to go to MIT and meet professors, uh, you get to see the latest and greatest and, and makey makey boards and and everything that's coming out for the kids in the future. Professional development opportunities are, are off the charts. But on the same level, Teen Summit, I think someone mentioned a teen conference a minute ago. I mean, for the kids, uh, we've got kids that maybe have never been 20 miles from home. Uh, to be able to hop on a jet airplane, go up to Boston, stay at Boston University in a dorm, work with kids from around the world on projects uh, in on the campus setting, get to eat food at the campus, uh, you know, spend some time in Boston. But uh, the two biggest wows, I think, that you're not going to get anywhere else are the professional development for the coordinators and, and the teen summit experience for the kids. Um, you know, I just tell you, this is, gives me chills, you know, to think that the opportunities that you're giving our, our young people. Um, Aaron, what has been your biggest surprise since managing the clubhouse? Oh, wow. So, I mean, my personal biggest surprise since uh, managing a, a clubhouse has kind of been recently, right? So the bounce back from COVID was real. And what I started to find was a lot of our youth were expressing more vulnerabilities and topics that I we haven't touched on before in all those other years, right? So, you know, we always had, you know, a big music studio presence, a big video presence, but um, kids started coming back with graphic design and started really touching on issues like mental health and, and podcasts. And I'm having, I'm having kids uh, identify in the LGBTQA uh, community. I'm having kids talking about home life, but it's uh, it, and it's not like private conversations. These are group talks. So, and I think that's the beauty about our spaces, right? Nice. So you can come and say, yeah, well, I, I want to do coding, I want to do video game design, but at the same time, we can order a pizza and sit at the green table and just kick back and talk about what's really happening in, in their lives, what's really happening in the community from their standpoint. And I, I think that that big surprise has been the openness and vulnerability from youth that I've seen that I sometimes don't even see in adults. Right, right, right. Oh, again, it's just amazing what you all are doing. Um, I would say the biggest surprise, anyone else would like to weigh in on that? Uh, Xavier, what's your biggest surprise? I'm going to talk from just being super new to the space. So like, honestly, everything is kind of a surprise. I'm still trying to digest a lot of things. But I will say my biggest and probably help most like appreciative surprise is how helpful all the coordinators are outside of my clubhouse uh, or my tech center. Oh. Being able to reach out to just about anybody, have a conversation like, oh, I'm lost, I need some help. Oh yeah, let's hop on a Zoom call, let's talk. Like, what, are you serious? Like, yeah. And they'll like even check in with you when you're not even like thinking about them. Hey, yo, it's been a while, just to make sure you're good, this at the third. So the support that's felt, you literally feel like you're part of a family. And that's like weird to say, but like you really do feel like, yo, I have a community outside of just my like, Oh. Grand Street bubble. Like I have a huge, I can like, I can reach out to Aaron. I can definitely reach out to Robert. Like I can reach out to all these different like resources. And so being so far away, especially during COVID and trying to figure out the virtual life and then put things together. So like young people can actually be in this space, like having them as a beautiful resource that like actually really wants to talk to you and actually help out has been such a godsend. So like, I am very appreciative of just having them in there. 
Well, thank you so much, Xavier. I mean, your enthusiasm and just is really is contagious. And I just had to thank you, Xavier. I had to thank Aaron also, and of course, Robert, for being on the show. Uh, how inspiring each of you are. So I want to tell our audience, we could go on longer. I wish we could. But if you're ever looking for a clubhouse, I invite you to check out the website, the Clubhouse Network dot org for a location near you and they are out there so i hope that you will seek them out my inspirational quote is from oprah winfrey every time you say you want or you believe you're the first to hear it it's both a message to you and others about what you think is possible don't put a ceiling on yourself Thank you so much for watching the television show and connect with me on Facebook at Ingrid's World and follow the show at Ingrid's World VA in Twitter and Instagram. Never miss an episode of Ingrid's World because the show is on Ingrid's World LLC YouTube channel and Ingrid'sWorld.org. Bye for now.